Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions in the worlds of social media, sports, and pop culture. And I gotta say, my guest uh, this afternoon is a legend. Um, he is a former WWE champion. Um, we are with Rob Van Dam, RVD. Rob, welcome to Pop Turnative. Thanks, dude. Are you saying um, Pot Tourist? Is that what you said it's called? Pop Turnative. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. I We're, I'm, I'm not. I, yeah, I, I, I know. I, I know where you're going with that, man. I know where you're going. <laughs> Canada's base cop actually uh, starts today here, and uh, I think it's in San Bernardino. But got some friends going to the cannabis cup this weekend. I thought that's where you were headed. Ah, uh, no. Cool, uh, man. Thanks for having uh, me. Glad to be here, dude. Yeah, that's awesome. So right off the bat, um, you know, lately, uh, I've been seeing on social media you're involved with. Uh, you've been doing some indie bookings here and there. Um. But uh, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, Rob Van Dam, when did you um, – take us back. Let's go back. When did you decide you wanted to become a professional wrestler? Like, was that really early on in your, in, in your, in your childhood? Like, when did that start? Yeah, I decided at my very first live show that I went to. Um, I grew up, of course – where are you at, by the way? I asked you that earlier. Yeah, Minnesota. sorry. I'm uh, I'm from Canada, so I'm in Ottawa, Ontario, the nation's capital. Aha, uh -huh. right on. Um, so um, my first live WWF show, because that's all that I got as a kid and territorially, you know, growing up in Michigan. Um, I, very first show, I think it was 85-ish, I guess. Um, should look that up. But anyway, um, it was at my very first live show. I, I, I don't remember ever even thinking about it before that, but, uh, somebody mentioned it to me at the show, somebody on the inside, um, that traveled with the wrestlers. Uh, she said, you know, if you, you really love it that much because I, I was, um, as a fan, I was excited right away. Like, as soon as I started watching it, I was just like, oh, my God. You know, I had to watch it the next week, and I had a lot of a lot of passion um, and excitement. But I, I didn't think about myself being a wrestler. I thought these guys were superheroes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, this person that I talked to that was on the other side of the gate, you know, was saying, uh, you know, you should uh, start working out and when you're uh, lifting weights and doing whatever you can to grow and when you're 18, um, you can uh, you can get in. And, and she said that she would help get me in. Um, I don't she think I talked. I don't think I talked to her again after that, but oh. she planted the seed, though. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you've been in so many big matches. I mean, it's I guess it's kind of hard to kind of pinpoint, but what have been some of your favorite moments, whether it's in, uh, you know, WWE, Impact Wrestling, ECW? Is there always that kind of specific moment that you're like, wow, that, that was pretty awesome that I was able to be a part of that? Well, I mean, they all have their own, you know, separate moments. I think outside of the box and I always have. Um, so some of the matches that are um, extreme are the ones that I'm more proud of because I feel like that's where, uh, where I excelled and always have. Um, I feel like that's where my strengths are. Just like my mentor Sabu, you know, we like to uh, give it, we like to give it all um, every night for the show um you know when and back then it was chairs and tables and fighting through the crowd whatever but um so matches that stick out in my mind uh obviously uh my crowning moment was when i beat john cena at one night stand yeah. for many reasons it was a great match um and that was really for the spirit of what i'm talking about which uh you know was culminated in 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 the it was embodied by um the ecw um passion that the wrestlers and the fans and everybody had so so that night it was all for hey we prefer this hardcore extreme wrestling 
over the other stuff and boom. And so that was, and then starting a third brand off of that, that was, that was my crowning moment. ECW, um, I had great matches with, um, in the original ECW with Sabu, of course, uh, Jerry Lynn. Some of my favorite matches are with Jerry Lynn. I, I consider those my most athletic because we, we uh, brought a level of competition out of each other and out of ourselves that just progressed every time we wrestled um and, and, and when people ask about tna um you know i i liked uh, the matches that i had with abyss um i think that i haven't been involved in too many barbed wire matches uh i think that might maybe only one um that i actually wrestled at um or at least just with abyss anyway i don't think i've the only other barbed wire match i've been in was uh when i ran down during Sabu and Terry Funk's uh, match with ECW, and I put the gloves on and I cut it, I cut around, and um, a lot of people remember that. But um, Abyss and I had some matches where there's barbed wire and tables, and, and um, that's that's how I like to show off. I like to, I got a lot to show on the offensive move with um, you know fancy spin spins and flips and stuff, but I also can absorb a lot of punishment. Yeah, always have been able yeah. to. So. Um, my, I like to uh, have an outlet to show that off. No, absolutely. Um, another thing Those I wanted to ask, another thing I want to ask you is because um, you know your theme song. Um, well, your impact theme song was pretty good too. Raw, bad, damn, the whole show. That, that was pretty good too. Very but, polarizing. Yeah, but um, your uh, your WWE theme is probably one of, regards as one of the best, like rock, like rock slash metal wrestling thieves of all time so i wanted to know and it, we, it like i want to know before we go into the specific question i'm sure like were you a, were you a fan of your music when it first was introduced to you ah uh, um hmm i mean you are I mean, one of a kind maybe not, at, maybe not at first because i was expecting something else Okay. Um, uh, it, it just, you know, that, that's my perspective because I was talking to, uh, Shano, um, about my music because they had something that was pretty ugly that they played when I first came to W, um, WE in 2001, it was pretty generic for, um, and, and then, um, I was talking to Shano about, I used to come down to walk by Pantera originally, but then, Paul had a band called Kilgore redo it, so we own the rights to it, and we own ECW, you know, so I was telling Shano, uh, how about that? And he said, uh, yeah, we'll give it a listen. And then uh, it was like the next uh, time, I, the next week or next TV or whatever, he, uh, he said, um, I guess he called me into the truck, if I remember right, and said, you know, that he wanted me to, to, to hear my music, and I expected it was going to be that, um, and instead it was one of a kind, so I was... You know, I was thrown by that. Um, uh, obviously, you know, people, you know, it gets people excited, like right off the bat. And uh, once I found out that the band Breaking Point wrote this originally for me, then I really accepted it. Because I thought at first, maybe they picked a song that wasn't being used off an yeah. album and said, oh, you know, let's, and then I listened to the, and I saw the lyrics, you know, and about being one of a kind. And I was like, hey, that That's is me. me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, another thing, I bet Shad is it? I believe Shadows Fall, the bad Shadows Fall, covered your theme as well. Uh oh, yeah. I, I hope they don't hear me say that it was awful. <laughs> oh no! On who's this? <laughs> Such a cute little dog. With, oh, with... This, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were like picking up a phone or something. This oh is, no! Uh, <laughs> I want. <wasn't... laughs> yeah, sorry. This is uh, her name is Petrie. It's uh, Katie's. My girlfriend Katie Forbes. Um, this came with her a package deal, uh, and uh, uh, Peter's little sweetheart. And Katie says that was the name of a pterodactyl in a movie called Land Before Time. So, oh wow, I actually have a little five pound little Morky named Leo. Uh, he's he's he, great. Little, yes, yeah, I, five five pounds of fury though, Rob. You know these little dogs. They don't mess oh, around. Oh yeah, they don't. They don't mess I had a heart when, oh, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, she's, she's only four and uh, she went to, 
to the vet because the vet said uh you gotta get her teeth cleaned and then the the anesthesia put her under she never woke up and that was oh, that was one of the worst things I, i've been through at a very bad time in my life too um <laughs> But, you know, the reason I mentioned that is I, anyone listening, be careful about getting your dog's teeth cleaned. I, I think it's bullshit. It's something that they push. The vets push it because it's extra business um, for them. But um, I, I'm scared any time now that an animal or a person goes under the anesthesia. Um, and I've talked to some people that have that have lost, you know, family members that way. And I, I didn't realize it till it hit me. But uh, I see that totally different now, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Um, be careful. And you can get your dog's teeth clean without putting them under. They don't even tell you that. But if you look it up, um, some dogs can do that. So I'm definitely a dog person. No, I love dogs. We just on popternative.com because we're a podcast. We're also a website too. We just posted an article about the health benefits of having a pet. Like there's hundreds of benefits about having pets. They That's just true. they just make everything better. They're used as therapy for That's a true. lot of people. It's It's incredible. Yeah, I'm very energy conscious, and it's very obvious to me how my spiritual vibration increases um, just looking at an animal, you know, and that's why, like, it gets higher, and that's that's better for you, and that's that's why, you know, like, it automatically makes your voice sometimes talk to them like little babies, like, or soft to them, you know, like, yeah. oh, are you okay, yeah. whatever. That's, uh, yeah, and I'm not very... Um, musically inclined either you know back to that other question energy inclined for sure i can tell how music uh makes me feel like the energy that uh that i emote as a reaction so that's what i go by but i really would not consider myself musically inclined like i i don't even know the last time i any music you know um cd or an album or uh there's iTunes, a big there's a big, there's a big but there's a big link between music and and wrestling it's a huge part of it sure no doubt about it, it has been since uh you know captain lou and cindy lopper back in the day with uh the the 80s and the rock and roll uh wrestling connection always has been and i appreciate that but i am not like um a fun person to have with you at a concert or i <laughs> I, I don't enjoy live music when i go to um, somewhere to have dinner or drink and there's live music, I almost always will turn around and go the other way. It's just uh Yeah, but what if someone what, what if someone wants to like start something in the mosh pit, you know, just five star frog splash and it's 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 a that that, was just... definitely definitely a good reason for me to not be there. <laughs> yeah. But um we'll wrap up soon. But first of all, Rob, like I mentioned it, you're a former WWE champion. You have done so much for wrestling, and I'm sure there's a lot of wrestlers like well, I know there's a lot of wrestlers that look up to you, your style, high flying style, very exciting. You see WWE's doing the you know the two oh five live, the cruiser weights, and you're also seeing a lot of big guys around, not just in WWE, but you know, Moose uh in Impact Wrestling, Donovan Dijak is actually with WWE NXT now. These are big guys that do a lot of high flying moves. What do you think about how wrestling wrestling has transitioned over these past couple of years well um it's kind of for me it kind of feels like the like the circle of life because i remember back uh in 93 94 when i was wrestling in all japan pro wrestling um it was it was a lot of uh bigger guys um you know it was it was i mean the americans were like dr Dusty williams terry gordy um, you know, Abdul the Butcher, Stan Hansen, Patriot. Um, these, these, most of this, my style um, was different, always has been, but I was the only one doing, doing like backflips off. And Stan Hansen in particular, what I was doing was killing the business. And he would like, let me know all the time. And of course, I was insulted. I was green and had my own perspective at that time. But um, I looked at it like, uh, you know, he just doesn't appreciate it because what I'm doing is changing the business, raising the bar, and uh, and he's not going to be able to keep up with it. And that's why he's upset. And uh, I think that I, I was right about that. But at the same time now, um, I see other wrestlers doing that. And um, I, I'm definitely not bitter like I think Stan Hansen was because he was still um, – trying to be in there and try to still be on top. And I'm, I'm like, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. um, but, but when I see the changes that the guys are making now, I, I feel 
as a veteran, I do feel like I don't necessarily like the way that they're that they're changing it. I mean, I've always had certain things about wrestling that I preferred, and certain wrestlers that I didn't prefer watching because of their whether it's their theatrics or, or just it was inconsistent with my views on wrestling being trained with the Sheik and Sabu. And so we look at certain guys like, God, oh, they're a joke. And, you know, some of those guys now, you know, have and are changing the business uh, in, in a way that, you know, I can see is being counterproductive. But at the same time, I think evolution is necessary everywhere with everything. Absolutely. Well, Rob, we'll wrap up. Thanks again so much. And I said it before, you're a legend, man. Like, thank you for everything you've done for wrestling. Right on. Appreciate it, dude. Um, I am going to Scotland in a couple of days for ICW. Uh, Katie will be with me as well. And um, that's uh, the next weekend. The um, I don't know what the dates are. I think it's, it's next Saturday and Sunday. And, you know, keep up with me at the Real RVD everywhere. Great. And can you do it? Can you do it before we go? Can you you got to do it. How's that go? Oh, you mean Rob, Rob, Dan, Dan. There it I got is. it, dude. Perfect. Thank you so much. Well, this has been Pop Turnative. You can catch previous episodes of Pop Turnative on our Facebook, on YouTube as well. Um, you can uh, follow us on Twitter. Until next time, this is RVD and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.